Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, uh, the segments where we analyze um, the headlines on our national dailies. Let's invite our guest, Mr. Tunde Kolawale, a public affairs analyst who joins us via phone. Uh, Mr. Kolawale, good morning. I think we're still going to you know, connect with him. Um, while we wait for Tunde Kolawale, I think we can just go through the uh, papers for now. Um, he will be joining us in just a few seconds and, of course, uh, having his uh, review of these uh, stories across Nigeria on a Monday morning. All right, let's begin with the Daily Trust newspaper. Headline reads, federal government postpones COVID-19 vaccination as doubt dog donated doses. Experts worried over reluctance to provide key documents. Navdat says there is no problem with the vaccine. Also on the Daily Trust, Senate lists conditions for creation of states. First Bank, Echo Bank, five others make 60 billion naira from e-banking charges. PDP crisis, governors decide seconders' fate today. Importers, exporters lose billions over customs server failure. Kidnappers free by Elsa businessman, detain ransom couriers. Three killed as gunmen abduct Swiss national, driver in Ogun. Obiano Umahi asked residents to ignore IPOB stay-at-home order. And uh, there's a picture here on the front of the Daily Trust, and it reads, Residents of Apu community in Ikulu Chiefdom, Zangon Kataf local government area, Kaduna State, troop out for free medical services provided by participants of the 68th regular course of the Nigerian Defense Academy. So that's free medical services um, there on the paper. All right, now let's see on the Punch newspapers. No work, no pay directive. Federal government battles NARD, opens attendance register, resident doctors adamant. Uh, resume first or forget further negotiations. Ministry orders insist on sanctions for doctors. It also says here, you can't bully doctors you haven't paid with no work, no pay threat. NARD lambast federal government. Tributes, empty stands as Tokyo 2020 ends. And also on the punch, PDP governors meet today. Reps uh, caucus demands seconders resignation. I have not fled Nigeria. I'm in Bene for Igboho, says Akin Loye. Also on the punch, federal government postpones vaccination resumption indefinitely. Lists 3,707 cases in one week. Stakeholders meet on vaccine distribution to states today. We can also find here on the punch, um, petrol landing costs hits uh, 249 naira litre. The regulation remains uncertain. And group roots for Oshimbajo's presidency list VP's qualities. Those are the big ones uh, on the punch newspapers this morning. Okay, well, I think in the southeast, a sit-at-home confrontation looms. As IPOB blows hot, government vows clamp down. On the nation newspaper, pressure mounts on PDP chairman seconders to quit. Southeast governors, IPOB clash over ghost Mondays. Senate's panel to recommend breakup of police operations. IG to lose some powers over deployment, funding. Members fall, fail to agree on state police. Tributes flow for business mogul, Kumbo. Buhari, governors, others. Budget, Asovela laments non-release non of full allocation. Nigeria's telecom sector attracts 822.66 billion naira. Respect Igboho's rights, kinsmen tell Benin government. Also on the nation, Nigeria finishes 74th on Tokyo Olympics medal table. Wife pours hot water on husband's girlfriend in church. U.S., Nigerian, the intact. Naira on rebound, dealers await $6.35 billion IMF Eurobon um, cash. And those are the stories on the nation newspaper. And out of the Daily Independent, ban on forex sales to BDCs, a devaluation imminent as Naira faces stiff pressure. Federal government unveils 250 billion Naira intervention facility to boost gas value chain. And Serap urges Buhari to probe spending of 881 billion Naira by 367 MDAs. Police kill two as gunmen abduct, expatriate and driver. Uh, Buhari Obasaki Oshomole mourn Captain Hosa Okumbo. Leadership crisis. How northern power brokers saved seconders. Party stakeholders to take final decision tomorrow. We are guilty of lack of political vision, says Babatokbe. 
And also, Senate denies proposing creation of additional 20 new states. Northern Coalition, others demand review of Abakari's suspension. Kanu's younger brother and IPOB disagree on today's sit-at-home order. And um, finally, on the Daily Independent, Y9 Nigerian Airlines are yet to benefit from $3.4 trillion EFCFTA treaty two years after. Good morning to our guest, Tunde Kolawale. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Kolawale, can you hear us? Yes, I'm hearing you. How was the night? It was, it was brilliant. Thanks for joining us and welcome to a new week. Uh, there's a pretty you. interesting stories on the newspapers this morning. I, I think we can start from the uh, southeast, uh, where, there, of course, there's you know, back and forth with regards to the seat-at-home order by the IPOB. Uh, in the news, uh, Nambi Kanu's younger brother apparently had asked that the seat-at-home be cancelled, mostly because of the NECO examinations. And, of course, the state governors are also adamant that it should not be um, uh, respected and people should go about their uh, lawful business and, and uh, activities. Um, what's your response to you know the IPOB and all of this? And what are your thoughts? Well, right? um, I have read the story of uh, what uh, the IPOB are planning to do in support of their leader, Mr. Namikano. I have also read the statement that the position taken by Namkano's younger brother. And they, there appears to be merit in both positions uh, taken by these two different um, uh, people. Namkano's brother is uh, saying that um, the seat at home order might affect uh, Catholic students who are going to be sitting for the local exam. Whereas the IPOB uh, appears not to be interested in NECO because, of, according to them, they no longer believe in Nigeria. But if you ask me for my take, I would have preferred that IPOB should be fit at home order and allow the children to take uh, the NECO exam. After all, even if um, I pause no longer believe in Nigeria. You still find some students in Nigeria here who take Cambridge exams and all sorts of foreign exams that still become very useful to them. I appeal to the two parties to negotiate and reach a compromise in the best interest of the Southeast people. All right. Um, moving away from the southeast now, we know that in the People's Democratic PDP, um, Secundus uh, seems to have a lot on his plate right now. There's mounting pressure. Um, that's, how, that's how the nation describes it, that there's mounting pressure on the PDP chairman, Uche Secundus, to quit. And when we see other papers, they also mention this particular situation. Um, the Daily Independent describes it as a PDP leadership crisis. Um, when we look at this situation, how do you see the PDP coming out stronger from this? Well, let me say it is not just the PDP. There are appears to me to be civil war in uh, most of the political parties that we have in the country today. If uh, you look at the APC, the Congress that they have conducted, rather than create the harmony, that the party has uh, desired or has intended that the Congresses will lead to it has further polarized the party. When you also look at the PDC, one would have expected as an opposition party learning to take power in 2023. There is more cohesion, there is more camaraderie, that there is going to be more rapport between the leadership of the party. So what we are seeing it's a kind of centrifugal force to try to blow away the party at uh, large. And then uh, you ask yourself, what really is the fundamental issue or challenge that the PDP has? First, that it is subjecting itself to this kind of very divisive tendency. No, just ego trip. There has to be ego clashes between most of the top echelons of the party. Uh, Governor Wilke, for example, is no longer in good terms with the chairman of the party, Mr. Secundo, which he himself had recommended as the party chairman. 
we also have some other tendencies in the party who are already looking at 2023 and they want to ticket and call the shop who become the chairman and hold most of the other executive uh, positions in the party so that once they see the structure of the party it is easy for them to realize they their political their respective political ambition in 2023. And of course, we also have our friend, uh, Mr. Yodiri Fayos, yes, who wants to remain relevant. He is also a struggle to become the chairman of the CDP. So it's all about better ambition. It has nothing to do with the general interest of, the, of, of all Nigerian people. But the country of the CDP is even so sad. Sad in so many respects, especially for the Nigerian people. It is, it is about the only party to say that the Nigerian people are open and looking at, at an alternative to the, to the APC. And um, if they are looking at them as alternative, and this kind of things are happening within their ranks and all that, then we are like the hope of the average Nigerian uh, party. There is not. And that is very, very frightening. It's like uh, even before 2003 comes, the PDP would like to surrender the government or the victory at the post to the APC without any fight. And that, in my humble opinion, is a pathway to the one party state in Nigeria, which is going to be very, very dangerous. We are not yet uh, having a one party state, and the situation is as calamitous and is as uh, chaotic. It's just uh, insecure. The economy is in tatter. So when you now have just one party dominating the political space, what is going to become the rest of us? In fairness, those who have criticized the conduct have some points. The man doesn't appear to me to have the charisma to lead a pan Nigerian political party, a highly destabilized party, and a party with the kind of Republican ideology that the PDP has. But the party should have waited. The man's time is going to run out in another three months' time. Then if you seek to recall to come to only contest, they have the option of not of not voting for him. Throw him out or forcing him out or get him to resign three months to when the new Congress and new executive committees are going to I mean, uh, vote for. Uh, doesn't uh, speak well uh, for me as uh, as as uh, an observer of what is happening in all these uh, political parties. And uh, if I will have my way, I will have even thought that people like Atiku will drop his political ambition and uh, become the chairman of the PDP uh, political party. He has the charisma, he has the resources, he has the reach, he has the political experience to mobilize people so we may begin to subscribe or join the PDP and even vote for them uh, at the poll. Another person they could have looked on to, who isn't talking too much today, or even uh, I would not know, is uh, Ibrahim Mantu, former deputy senator president. He is also charismatic, he has his spirit, and they were with that to lead a pan Nigerian political party like the PDP. All right, Mr. Kolawole. to find out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, just uh, so we can you know, cover a, a couple more stories uh, before we go. Um, there's also a conversation about creation of 20 more states. Um, you know, the Senate has said that they are not, you know, the ones move, we're making the move and that they are going to be passing it over to INEC to uh, set up a referendum um, on that discussion. Do you agree that we may be needing more states in Nigeria? The creation of more states? Yes. Honestly speaking, I find that to be very, very strange. Uh, even the states that we have in the country today, out of the 36 states, including Abuja, only maybe about the three or four of them are being run in a very, very viable manner. All the other states depend on federal allocation to be able to survive. Most of them are now riding with security. They are only 10, 15, Government uh, salaries of staffers they are being able to pay. If you now create more states, how will those states be able to be self sustaining? How will they be able to run themselves? Rather than create more states, I would have thought 
that what those who are mentally the constitution should be looking at is um, creating more local government so that the government can become at the disposal of, of, of the people. And then uh, getting um, two federalism to begin to work in Nigeria. And then working out the parameter by which the party, I mean, by which the state, the respective state, can be self uh, sustaining. Because in fairness, there is no state in Nigeria today that is not viable. All of them are practically viable. The challenge we have had is that uh, the leadership, the political leadership, the administrative leadership in the civil service, they are indolent, they are incompetent, they are corrupt, they are not ready to do what is necessary to get most of these states uh, to run on a viable structure. Take for example, we can take for example, there is an agrarian society and agricultural crisis. Most of the cocoa and coffee that are uh, using food in the Kiti state today were planted before independence. That is uh, about 1959. And that is still what we depend on today. This is the result of this civil rule. The Kiti state has um, impact on the plant, on the plantation for most of this uh, crop and Nora. By now, they would have been yielding bountiful and pests, and then they would be having uh, products to export. And even if you don't even export that, you could be having uh, factories and uh, other industries to be processing the byproducts of this uh, uh, cocoa, coffee, and uh, cassava, and then uh, you'll be exporting. Look at a country like um, Ethiopia. They depend on only coffee and then their airline. When the man there now first came in, they were exporting raw coffee beans. And the man said, no, we must begin to add value to this thing. Package it and sell the coffee in the international market rather than selling the feeding that doesn't bring much. And today, coffee and the airline, uh, which they are now exporting, appear to be the dominant or uh, maybe about even 70, not 80 percent of the resources that uh, is being used to run Ethiopia as a country. This one, you can also say this for most of the other states. They can be self sustaining in the area of agriculture, in the area of IT, and then uh, some of these other ancillary areas. Human beings are the most important factor in development. And there is hardly any place in Nigeria that we don't have com two complements of quality, educated, vibrant, and highly resourceful women then, who can design programs, think out a uh, project, and also lay out a master plan for the growth and development of the state that we have in the city. So let them drop the proposal for the creation of 20 additional states. Rather, let's have more local government, and let the local government be self autonomy. And like we do have in the past, uh, we used to have municipal councils. He passed the municipal council, Lagos municipal council, and they were very powerful. They will make their own budget, they will generate their own resources, they take care of things like environmental sanitation, street lighting, uh, communal washing and uh, drying places, and then playground for our children when they are told uh, during the weekend. Those are the directions in, in which I think those who are mainly the constitution should be looking at. Okay, lastly, Mr. Um, Kolawole, I want us to take a look at the headline on the Punch newspaper. It's talking about the no work, no pay directive and that um, the federal government is battling NAD and asking all chief medical of officers to go ahead to open attendance registers and that any resident doctor who doesn't um, come to work and who doesn't sign that attendance register would not be paid salaries. And, you know, that's their own way of trying to make sure that doctors, you know, um, go ahead to resume work. Do you agree with the way the government is addressing this issue of the strike by resident doctors, threatening not to pay them? I mean, now it is even saying, no. you don't pay us anyway, so. Honestly, I don't agree. Uh, part of the challenge we have in this part of the world is that we have no respect for agreement. And a nation that has no respect for agreement, time and value for resources can hardly develop. For God's sake, these uh, medical people went on site from months ago, and then you negotiated with them, you entered into an agreement, and then the agreement was executed. 
no sooner than the Hague tried on the agreement that was executed, the federal government remit, refused to uh, implement its own side of the agreement. And that is what has led the doctors to go back on strike. And when you look at what the doctors are complaining about, could they be described to be outrageous? The answer is no. Most of the hospitals are around them. Common basic uh, medicines are not there. The facilities are not there. The workers are poorly motivated. Most of the structures uh, don't look like a hospital structure. They are run down. They look like a aperture, very dirty, ugly looking thing, never renovated, they have not been renovated so many years to come. Whereas when you go into hospices and all that, hospices or hospitals, I mean, you can almost compare them to first class uh, or five star hotels. They are factory clear. The environment is select. Do you have any of those hospitals in Nigeria today? Even when you take the teaching of hospitals, the apex hospitals that we have in the country, the government should stop these bullying tactics of saying that they will start the doctors or that they will not pay them for what that is uh, never done. Rather, they should look at the graver grievances of the medical doctor and find ways and means to address those grievances. Even the president himself, has he not been confirming what the medical doctors have been saying? If the hospitals are good, will he be traveling all the time for, me for medical treatment abroad? No. The answer is no. Which is a simple kind of you see an American president travel to Russia or to Germany or to China for treatment? Do you even see an Angela Merkel come to Africa for treatment and all that? Whatever your people are not available, whatever you cannot give them, a leader himself is not supposed to enjoy those facilities. But here the opposite is the case. They leave all the hospitals run down and then allow our people to die a needless death. And then they begin to bully the doctor, but they will not pay them, they will not do this, they will sack them. If they don't uh, resume their uh, work. For me, it won't work. These are professionals who have mortality. Look at the number of medical doctors that have left the country when the COVID pandemic uh, broke out. The British people sent an airplane in here to call to, me, to carry any medical doctor or not who is willing to come and work over there and, uh, and print it. The, the pandemic hasn't gone, and the doctors are still not in demand in most of these parts of uh, in many parts uh, uh, of the countries of the world. So that is the way you should be looked at. Furthermore, you now have a situation in which um, the federal government is saying that uh, they are no longer going to be vaccinating people against uh, COVID-19. When I read that story, I, I, I was shocked. I nearly wept. Some other countries of the world are now doing their grand of vaccination. A country like France, for example, say, look, the vulnerable, the elderly people, right. and the fact that people are above the 60. After the first and second doses, we are going to be giving them a booster dose. That is the third dose, so that we can be sure uh, that these people will never uh, uh, contract uh, the COVID-19. Well, and then uh, they will not be able right. to Mr. Kola, the And yes, please. We'll have to, um, we'll have to wrap it up here. Uh, but, of course, we, uh, we uh, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you for waking up with us on a Monday morning. And we wish you Thanks a very interesting week brother. ahead. Thank you. Good and morning. Right. Thank, thank you very you. much. All, All right. right. It's now time for um, Today in History. After the break, I'll come back to tell you about a significant day in South African history. And we'll be talking uh, 2014 in the United States. Uh, one of the incidents that led to the discussion of um, cameras, body cams rather, for United States police officers. We'll be back after the short break.